Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The Son of Righteousness has dawned with healing in his wings. Let us come to the light of Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, you sent your Son, full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. us pray. God in Trinity, eternal unity of perfect love, gather the nations to be one family and draw us into your holy life through the birth of Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. And, being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So today we're celebrating the circumcision and naming of Christ. I guess it's probably the Jewish equivalent of a baptism. Uh, I don't know whether... Uh, family would be there like they often are at a baptism uh, although of course uh, Joseph and Mary had gone away from where they lived uh, although of course his family should also have gone to Bethlehem but what I think we can say is it is the point at which um, a child is welcomed into the Christian church into sorry Baptism is when a child is introduced to the Christian church. Circumcision was when a child was introduced to the Jewish faith. And the community of the church, the community of uh, the Jewish faith. And if you think about baptisms, uh, we always have them in a main service because uh, if you look at the liturgy, it is the congregation welcoming a new member to their community. And I think, for me, that is a very important point, the drawing people into a community. If you look at the early Christian faith, then it was one of community people met together in Acts. It talks about people living together effectively in a commune um, where they shared everything in common. And uh, two disciples who sold some land and held back some of the proceeds for themselves um, suffered as a result. Now, we don't do that today. But I think this idea of community is an important part of faith. And I also think it is something which our current society is missing out on. So I've read a couple of articles uh, recently from people effectively talking about what their New Year's resolutions are going to be. And uh, there were a couple who said they were going to spend more time seeing friends and family. And there was another who said that he was going to spend less time uh, looking at things on his phone. And the two who said they were going to spend more time with their friends and family said that uh, the research shows that being with other people is good for us. And I think I would observe that there is perhaps less of that community. We know that fewer people join organisations these days. If you look back, let's go back 50 years, there would be all sorts of organisations and clubs you could join. And 
certainly whenever it's talked about that the church is losing members, whatever members might mean, um, it's pointed out that political parties are losing members. Uh, I've belonged to a couple of bridge clubs until I got long COVID. They're losing members. And younger people don't seem to join in the way that older people do. When I visit Bankside, the sheltered housing, um, what I find is that the the people there that I meet who I've known for 10 years will talk about how the younger people are no longer interested in a darts evening or uh, getting a, a coach to a shopping centre or something like that. They're much more interested in doing their own thing. But those of them who are there have this community uh, and it is literally starting to die out. Um, those of you who know Glad will know, you know, she is um, the latest member of that community, even though she was at Mill Street. And I think there is something about uh, individualism which means that fewer people have that link. And there is also research which shows that um, people who live in community have better health. And OK, these are all interesting things, but I think it would be fair to say that Jesus actually encourages us to live in community. As I've already said, in Acts, the early disciples lived, not just the twelve, but others too, lived and shared things in common. And if you think Jesus told us to uh, love our neighbour as ourself, well, if we don't know them, if we don't see them. And I recall that um, John Innes was always very interested in St Mark's and compared it to an early, uh, uh, the early church because of the relationships between people there. Um, that's not to say they don't exist in other churches, um, but there was something um, that may have come from the fact that a lot of people there came from a non-church background. And so they didn't know what they were supposed to do. And I think in some sense the church has perhaps lost that sense of being a community as people move away from areas. Um, including clergy. I can remember probably 20 years ago a priest from the next door parish to where I lived uh, retiring and he had been in the same parish from the end of his curacy until his retirement. And if you have a kind of rural community and you have some the priest who has been there all that time there is a sense of community that you don't get if you live in perhaps um, suburbia where people are moving jobs, clergy will come and go um, and you haven't got that sense of community. So as today we celebrate the circumcision and naming of Christ. Let us also think about what that introduction to community means for us and how we are uh, contributing to and receiving from
the communities that we may be part of, including the church. Amen. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe, we believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
let us pray. God, in whom everything lives and moves and has its being, teach us to serve others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the hungry, for those who cannot afford food and for places where there is no food to buy. Teach us to serve others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the thirsty, for those who cannot find water, for where there is no water that is safe to drink. Teach us to serve others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for strangers, for immigrants and refugees, for the lonely and dispossessed. Teach us to serve others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick and their carers, for those who could be healed if medicine was affordable. We remember those who have asked for our prayers, and we remember the dead and pray for their families and friends, remembering especially those known to us. And we remember too those whose year's mind falls at this time. Teach us to serve others. Lord, in your mercy, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yeah. 
May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. All glory, thanks, and praise to God.